Today's episode, we are going to be heading to the Oregon coast. I am really excited. I've got a trip planned for two nights with my niece, Maya, and my sister, Erin. And we are going to have a girl's getaway. And it is the perfect time of year to do this because as you can see right now, it is raining, but the weather forecast is that it's going to clear up and we're going to have a couple beautiful days at the Oregon coast. We are headed to my brother's A-frame Airbnb in Rockaway Beach, Oregon. And it is the cutest little A-frame on the entire Oregon coast. I'm a little biased. My brother and sister-in-law bought this A-frame a few years ago and it was completely run down and they spent several years DIYing and restoring it themselves. I'm so proud of what they have accomplished with this beautiful A-frame and it's really fun for us to get to go stay at the same place because it kind of feels like home away from home. If any of you are interested in staying at the Airbnb, I will link it in the description below. I'm about to head to go pick up my sister and my niece, but before I do that, I wanted to tell you the most exciting news. I am hosting my first vintage flea market. So I'm teaming up with Mindy King of Rose City Vintage Market, who also hosts the Palm Springs Vintage Market in Palm Springs. Mindy and I are teaming up this summer to bring back the biggest and the best antique show to the Portland Expo Center. It's going to be an indoor and outdoor event. It is actually going to be two vintage markets at the same time. Rose City Vintage Market will be the indoor show, and I am so excited to announce that Left Coast Flea will be the outdoor vintage market. Vendors and shoppers from all over the country, you are invited. It will be this summer, July 15th and 16th at the Portland Expo Center. I have an entire tab created on my website with all of the additional information. So if you are interested in being a vendor or you just want to check out a little bit more about what's going on with the market, you can head to my website, leftcoastrevivals.com. Click on the flea market tab and you can find out more information there. I'm so excited. It's going to be an amazing time. I'm also going to be hosting a shop with me meetup the following week. So make sure that you subscribe to my newsletter on my website so that you can find out more details about that shop with me day as soon as I have the details sorted out. Without any further ado, let's head to the Oregon coast, cross our fingers. We're really going to get that sunshine and hopefully we will find a lot of great vintage too. On our way to Rockaway Beach, we had to stop and see my baby sister who lives in Seaside, Oregon, which of course means that I made them go shopping with me at the Seaside Antique Mall. This mall has several hundred vendors and it is located right on Broadway Street, which is the main strip in downtown Seaside. I have been obsessed with these antique jugs literally for over a year now. This is the second time I've seen them here. I just can't quite bring myself to splurge on them. This one is priced at $99, which I know the value is there because these are so hard to find that I haven't been able to even find another one online. I'm still on the hunt for the perfect olive oil and balsamic vinegar containers, and these would be perfect because they are not clear, so I wouldn't have to worry about natural light affecting the olive oil. I just can't bring myself to pay this much for an olive oil decanter, but I already know that when I leave, I'm going to have not buyer regret, which is a real thing by the way. They have some vendors in this mall that have some of the most amazing Native American jewelry I've ever seen. Check out this spider. Isn't that incredible? Wouldn't this be cute if you had an Airbnb? You can have people sign your guest book. $20. But I don't have an Airbnb. I would have got it for my brother's place, but they already have a really nice one. Candle holder is beautiful. Ooh, this just gave me an idea. While well, Aaron's around the corner. 
dinner. I got two wooden lamps for her bedroom makeover. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about, I could paint little designs like this on that. Oh, yeah. Because they're kind of boring and plain. Totally. Wouldn't that be pretty? Super <laughs> I feel like I could do, I could handle this. Like, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Might see. be worth a try. It's cute. This is pretty. It's only $24.95. I'm so excited about this metal vase find. This is a beautiful piece made in Mexico and all of this is hand painted. We are taking this up to the front counter and starting our pile. This looks beautiful. It is marked a signed Japanese sculpture for $49. Very interesting. Let's see if we can figure out who it is made by. Oh wow. I like this. These little mugs are going to be perfect for the studio to have next to our Nespresso machine. I've been looking for something that's going to be the perfect size for just a single espresso. And this is really going to tie in the colors that I have in that space. I've got the blue walls. I've got lots of green with the plants. And then there's a little bit of an orangish yellow in the wallpaper. $40 an alabaster pole. That is gorgeous. That'd be so pretty with fruit. That's tempting at $40. I'm also loving this stone carved woman. It says that it's signed. It's really heavy, so I'm gonna have to put the phone down. I'll take a look at the signature. <laughs> He's like fishing. That's adorable. That's really cute. A little fish down there. That's funny. Something the pandemic really taught me was to truly cherish the special relationships that you have in your life. These past couple years, I have been intentionally setting aside time to spend with the special people in my life. I love my sisters, I love my nieces, and we love our girls' beach time. No matter how busy life gets, it is so important to set aside time for these relationships. Just a few minute drive north of Rockaway is the city of Wheeler, and this has one of my favorite antique malls on the Oregon coast. If you are doing a vintage shopping and thrifting trip along the Oregon coast, make sure that you add Wheeler Station Antiques to your stops. They've got multiple levels, hundreds of dealers, antiques, and vintage of all eras, and I never ever leave this place empty handed.
I'm gonna pick this up for staging. It's only $15, but I feel like this could be used in a lot of different settings. It could be used in a kitchen setting, but it also could be used in a bathroom setting. I'm wondering if you cleaned it out, if you could even use this to have a flower stem in. That might look really pretty having just a single flower bud in it. I haven't come across one like this before and it's got great texture to it. So for 15 bucks, we're gonna go put it at the front counter. I've been looking to pick up a lot more small furniture pieces that I can sell locally. I have an idea for staging a room setup with this little red bench. So you're gonna have to stay tuned for that because I am almost finished painting the big wall in our studio. And then I'm gonna really have some fun decorating full vignettes. These are beautiful vintage stone bookends. I like that it looks like an abstract person sitting and resting up against a wall, but they're kind of small and I'm a little worried they might not actually hold up books even though they're stone. I spotted this beautiful wrapped sterling snake bracelet here in one of the cases. So I'm gonna go up front and see if we can get the key, but I'm pretty sure we are getting that one. And now I am positive because it is 20% off. I absolutely love Oregon Myrtle Wood, and I've always wanted one of these perfume bottles. It's $19.50, but it is 20% off, and I've been wanting to pick up one of these for so long, so today is the day we are gonna finally get one. I love when I unexpectedly am drawn to something. This is not something that I would normally pick up, and maybe I'm feeling nostalgic because I was picking up seashells on the beach last night with my sisters. But for some reason today, I am really drawn to this planter. I don't know how old this is, but I know it was very popular to decorate jewelry boxes with seashells during the Victorian era. This probably isn't that old, but all of the shells are intact. It's $34, but this space is also on sale, so we are gonna go add that to the pile. This is a pretty little studio pottery base that is signed. It is only $8. And honestly, at Goodwill lately, things have been priced at $6.99. So the fact that I'm at an antique store, $8 seems like a really good deal. I've always loved these penny rugs. They're also called cat's tongue. And these are beautiful antique folk art handmade rugs and they can be used as wall hangings also. I am loving this one because of the critter at the center. It kind of looks like an otter. Maybe it's a bear. I don't know what kind of critter it is. Tell me in the comments below what kind of critter you think this actually is. They're asking 125 and I've seen these go for around 200 to $250. Since I typically don't end up picking these up because they are a little bit more primitive and antique. And so many times they have pinks and colors that don't just really fit my style. I'm gonna get this one today because I am loving the critter and the colors on it. And this one is also in really good condition. <music> You've probably seen me pick up so many pieces of carved wood items from India. I really like this one because of the shape on it. It's a little bit different than anything I've come across before. Sadly, this space isn't on sale, but it is only $25 and I really love it. So we're gonna get it. This painting was here the last time I came in and I'm still in love with it. They have it on sale for $195. I'm not gonna get it, but someone needs to come to the Wheeler Station Antique Mall and buy this because it is an amazing piece of 1970s art.
We are going to get this because I need more smalls for my first Friday sale and I love this little geometric design with this wooden candle holder. I am in love with this Mexican clay table wreath. This is such a gorgeous piece. They originally had it priced at $90, but it is currently on sale for only 50. And I have seen these sell online for over $150. So we are getting this today, partly because that's a great deal, but mostly because I absolutely love it. We are gonna make one final stop at Vintage by the Bay. This one is a little bit south on Highway 101. As soon as I'm in the door, I already spot something that I like. This is a vintage handmade little wall hanging with a beautiful tree of life. And it is only $12. And we are also gonna get this vintage shaving brush for only $10. I'm looking for smalls to stage with, and this might be a nice little accent if I'm doing a vanity setup. And it can always double as a duster. This beautiful triple box is actually from an antique sewing machine. I was just talking to the owner about it and when it came into the antique store, they had both sides, but sadly they were being sold individually and the other side already sold. I have a couple ideas for what I might use this for. I might store some jewelry repurposing items in here, but I also might use this in the kitchenette area of our studio because this could be perfect for storing silverware and other things that we might need handy in the kitchen space. I am also gonna pick up this vintage wooden abacus. It is only $8 and again, this is gonna be a great small item for staging different vignettes. I'm always looking for things that are a good deal and that are vintage and unique that I can use to decorate bookshelves and vignettes. When Jesse and I are out of town, we always have family members that are staying at our home to keep our home safe and our kitties. There are two main reasons why we love using Pretty Litter for our cats. And the first one is because it traps the odors and smells and nobody wants a stinky bathroom. Nobody wants that. Pretty Litter isn't just pretty. It has ultra absorbent crystals that trap the odor instantly so your bathroom won't smell. The super light crystal base also minimizes mess and dust. And the crystals last up to a month, which means less scooping and fewer trips to the garbage can. And Pretty Litter ships free across the United States in a small lightweight bag. I never have to worry about running out of it and I never have to lug a huge container from the grocery store to my car, from my car to my basement. But the other and more important reason is because it changes colors when the cats go to the bathroom. This gives me so much peace of mind knowing that while we are out of town, there's somebody looking on our cats and they're gonna know if something is a little bit off just because of the kitty litter. Go to prettylitter.com slash left coast to save 20% off your first order. A huge thank you to Pretty Litter for sponsoring today's video and for helping keep my cats healthy. The Oregon coast always makes my soul so happy. It is my favorite place to go with family and friends, and it is one of my favorite places in the entire state of Oregon to go vintage shopping. I never walk out empty handed, especially at that Wheeler Antique Mall. I'm really excited to unload the car and show you a few of my favorite things that I picked up on this trip and tell you a little bit about why I picked them up and show you how I'm gonna decorate with them. 
We are gonna start with this beautiful Kokashi doll. So this is a Japanese hand turn wooden doll and I feel like this one is a really unique piece. There's a couple reasons why. You typically see them hand painted and this is the first time that I have ever seen one where all of the details are a little bit more understated and abstract rather than the more traditional painted on style. The other reason that I think that this might be a valuable piece is that it has the artist signature on the bottom and it's not a stamp. A lot of times you will see these dolls with stamps on the bottom and even though they are still handmade and hand painted, they are often sold as souvenirs and there are larger quantities of those items made. But something about this one is telling me that this might be worth a little bit of money. And even if it's not, I love it. And that is the reason you buy something first and foremost. You gotta love it first. Unfortunately, I cannot read Japanese. So if I have any followers out there who are Japanese or who can speak and read Japanese, I would be so grateful if there is any chance that you can translate this writing on the bottom. I just think this is a really special one and I probably won't be selling it no matter what I find out about this piece just because it is so unique and I have always had such a love for these wooden Japanese dolls. Here's an example of what I was talking about where they typically have the really beautiful hair added on as a separate piece and they also have a lot of color and hand painting. I'm also going to look on Facebook groups I follow a Japanese pottery group, but I don't follow one for wood. So I'm going to look into that and see if I can find a Facebook group that I can join that might be able to help me identify this. I have been having so much fun doing the updates and identifications at the end of these videos. So hopefully I will find out more information on this very soon and I will include what I find out on this in an upcoming episode. So make sure when you're watching these episodes, you watch till the very end because I'm going to start including a lot more of updated information because a lot of the time I don't find out more about the history until after the episode has already come out. It takes a lot of work doing research and so many of you have been so helpful in the past. So stay tuned to the end of my videos from here on out because I'm going to try to include that information as often as I possibly can. This has got to be my second favorite find. I really like a lot of the things that I picked up at the coast, but this one's really special because I recently missed out on some beautiful hand-painted Mexican candelabra pottery pieces, very similar in style to this wreath. I went to an estate sale and I kind of had my heart set on getting a few of those, but I didn't get them. I wasn't first in line. So this was kind of like the universe making up for that and I've never come across one of these wreaths before and you know that I love to use candles in a lot of my displays so I think that this is going to be absolutely beautiful laid flat with a candle in the center. I got a really good deal on this. These sell online for a couple hundred dollars so I think I paid about half if not closer to a quarter of the full retail price and it's in incredible condition as you can see. This would make a beautiful wall hanging if you included this in a gallery wall. There are so many different ways that you can use something like this. And you could also lay it flat and instead of having a candle in the center, you could have a beautiful vase with some flowers. So, so many uses for something like this and I'm really excited to keep this here in the studio and use this for styling and decorating videos down the road. I see a lot of carved wood vases and candle holders from India, but this is the first time I had come across one in this shape. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It might have originally been some type of a decanter because when you pull this off, it does have a whole basin down there that could fit some kind of a liquid. So it might have had some kind of a stopper on the top originally. I've seen some of these wooden decanters that actually have a wooden ball that kind of sits on the top as the lid. So it could have had something like that, maybe cork, maybe not at all. Maybe it was just a vase and I can't get it back in. I pick up a lot of beautiful Oregon Myrtle Wood things from time to time at thrift stores, but the one thing I've always been on the hunt for and I never have found at a thrift store are the little Myrtle Wood perfume bottles. And I think that these would be so beautiful to have displayed on a vanity if you had a couple different types of perfume in them. 
You could even take the lids off and use them as propagation stations if you left the glass inside. They always have such beautiful shape on them and in the past I've kind of passed up on picking them up because typically I find them for around $12 to $14 at an antique store and that's probably pretty close to their value. But I decided today that I'm finally going to start a collection of these and maybe once I have a set of four of them I will sell them as a complete set. I love to have things that I get excited about when I'm out picking so this is my very first Oregon Myrtle Wood perfume bottle and hopefully you will see me find some more soon. I picked up both of these for styling. This one's really beautiful because it has this star-like woven design over a glass bottle. And I think this is actually a liquor decanter. Let's smell it and see. Yep, that was definitely a liquor decanter. So it could be obviously reused as that, or it could be used as a giant perfume bottle. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit and use it for staging because I think it has some really nice texture to it. And then this, I think, is actually a shaving cream brush from back in the day. I could be wrong, it's a little bit large for that. But lately I have been hunting down some more primitive and antique small items for styling. And I thought that this would be just a great little accent, especially if I'm setting up some kind of a little vintage vanity setup. Another favorite item that I picked up was this at the Seaside Antique Mall. It came with a tag inside of it that was for a woven basket and it had the artist's signature and it was from the Papago tribe in Arizona. So I'm not positive if this piece of pottery is also from Arizona or if somebody just stuffed the basket weaving tag down here, but it does look to be a fairly old piece and I know that these can be very valuable, especially if you can find out the artist who originally made them. This one is a beautiful neutral one with a classic Southwestern design and I'm very excited to add this one to my personal collection. A lot of these items I'm gonna get squeezed into my first Friday sale, which is actually before this video comes out. So I will update you with how much those items sold for because I have seen a lot of comments recently asking how much I would value the items for. And while I don't always talk about numbers, I do wanna include that. So those of you who are watching and you're trying to learn what you might be able to value an item for can kind of get an idea of what I paid for the items in this video and what I was able to sell the ones that I was selling for. I hope that information is useful and I will go ahead and do a pretty montage right now with some of those items decorated and what I sold them for in my first Friday sale. You are new to my channel I list all of my vintage finds the first Friday of every single month and I have some incredible finds that you have not seen me find yet because they are coming up in upcoming videos but they are going to be going live for sale this Friday March 3rd at 3 p.m. Pacific time on my website leftcoastrevivals.com and if you want to make sure that you don't miss when that sale goes live you can hit the add to calendar button on my website and that way you will get an alert 15 minutes before the sale goes live you can also subscribe to my newsletter and that will keep you up to date on everything going on, including the first Friday sales. At the beginning of this video, I announced that I'm gonna be hosting my very first vintage market this summer, July 15th and 16th at the Portland Expo Center, and it will be called the Left Coast Flea. I am so excited for that event. This is actually something that I have been wanting to do for years, and I wasn't sure if I was ever gonna have the courage to take this risk and do it. So I don't ask for help often, but I really would love your help and support with this vintage market. So even if you can't make it to the vintage market, maybe because you're out of town, I would be so grateful if you would share this event with your friends and family who might be interested or able to attend. 
Word of mouth goes so far, and I really wanna make this a fun and successful event for all of the people who are signing up as vendors, which also means it will be a better event to shop as a shopper. I will be creating a Facebook event page and I will share that in the description below. And I also have the event on my website so you can share that information. Or you can even share this video with your friends and family. As always, I am forever grateful for your support and I will see all of you in a brand new episode very soon.